How's it going, Io? In this video, we're going to talk about Swifties being criticized over theater etiquette, Millie Bobby Brown's insanely cringe interview, and a new AI law that has just been revealed. So be sure to like and subscribe if you love this video and want to see more like it. So Taylor Swift's Eras Tour concert film was finally released last Friday, and the scenes from inside the theaters are absolutely wild. Across the world, Swifties have been singing along at full volume, screaming at the top of their lungs, filming themselves reacting to the visuals, dancing in the aisles, and acting like it's a nightclub inside the cinema. Someone even brought a cutout of Travis Kelsey to one of the screenings. A group of Swifties were spotted doing the final bow alongside Taylor in another theater. And even Taylor Lautner was there doing backflips at a screening that he and his wife had hosted for Taylor Swift fans. In every single video, fans look like they're having an amazing time. But as soon as the videos were shared on social media, it wasn't long before they went viral and caught heaps of criticism from the general public for their cinema etiquette. In one video that has now gone viral on TikTok, you can see see an entire theater of Swifties all dressed in their Eras Tour outfits, and they can be seen jumping around 22 and rolling on the floor as Taylor sings illicit affairs. While it's not typical cinema behavior, it turns out that they're actually not doing anything wrong at all. In fact, these vibes have been encouraged by Taylor and the cinemas themselves. AMC, Cineworld, Odeon, and Vu have given the go-ahead for fans to dress up, trade friendship bracelets, sing their hearts out, and treat the event like an actual Eras Tour concert. But of course, some people still think that they're doing a little bit too much. And the comments under these videos are pretty brutal. People say things like, get the F back to your seat. This is not high school musical. And at what point does this go from harmlessly having fun to everyone wants to be the main character and doesn't respect anyone else in the theater? So obviously there's a lot of haters when it comes to this kind of thing, but amongst all that criticism, there were also a lot of fair points that were brought up. A lot of people are now calling out the brutal and unfair criticism of Swifties at the screenings, pointing out that some Swifties who either weren't lucky enough to get tickets or simply couldn't afford them, well, for them, this is their Eras Tour concert. Defending the viral videos, one person wrote, some of you are straight up being mean to other Swifties when Taylor and her team literally said, treat this like a concert. Y'all forget that this is the Eras Tour experience for some Swifties. Of course, they're going to dance and sing. If you want silence, watch it at home. Another person wrote, honestly, this is fine. It's fine to do this for a concert movie. Not like they're doing this in the Killers of the Flower Moon or something. If you don't make a mess, go have fun things are bleak enough. On TikTok, some people have been responding to criticism by sharing one of Taylor's own quotes, like the one where she says, the worst kind of person is someone who makes someone feel bad, dumb, or stupid for being excited about something. So what is the takeaway from all of this? Is theater etiquette dying? Well, kind of, but when it comes to this specific kind of concert movie, you're allowed to enjoy it whichever way you want to. You can sing, dance, dress up, as long as you remember to be respectful of the staff. Besides, if you've been on the internet recently, then you'll have probably heard about how hard hard it was for fans to get errors tickets. I mean, it was an actual nightmare. Basically, over 3.5 million people registered to get a pre-sale code from Ticketmaster's verified fan system, but only 1.5 million fans were sent codes to access the pre-sale. Ticketmaster then said that due to all these bot attacks, as well as fans who didn't have codes, they reported that 3.5 billion total system requests were recorded during that pre-sale. As a result, fans were stuck for hours and the website itself was frozen or it kept crashing at the checkout. In the end, 2.4 million tickets were sold during the pre-sale alone. Ticketmaster then later canceled the general sale due to what they called insufficient remaining ticket inventory to meet that demand. Essentially, the verified fan system was meant to ensure that fans get their hands on tickets before the bots and the resellers do. But shortly after the pre-sale, tickets began popping up on ticket resale websites for ridiculous amounts of money, like literally thousands. Now you might be wondering, how on earth did this happen? Well, the company has been able to get away with all sorts of things due to a lack of competition. They can refuse to share how many tickets are sold, at what price, or how many are available, which allows them to create artificial scarcity. Not only that, they can also get away with hiding many of the fees on top of the ticket price and not showing them until after you select the actual tickets. In fact, the company has frequently lobbied against transparency laws that would require them to explain these extra costs to buyers. Then there's the so-called dynamic pricing, which is a relatively new system used by Ticketmaster that sets the prices based on demand. So the more people waiting in line for tickets, the higher the prices go. They will label their dynamically priced tickets things like platinum seating. They will label these dynamically priced tickets as things like platinum seating. Though the name suggests a great location, these seats can in fact be located literally anywhere in a venue. For certain shows, the company will simply reserve a number of tickets to have a price that can fluctuate higher or lower based on demand. So yeah, it's a nightmare that even Taylor Swift herself is sick of, which means that we need the entire ticketing industry to change. Now, have you heard Millie Bobby Brown's latest 
latest interview because this is the reason that celebrities need PR training. Millie told Glamour magazine that she will not mourn the end of Stranger Things and if anything the show only got in the way of her career. The series which is set to film its fifth and final season once the strike is resolved seems to have been something of an obstacle for Millie. She said when you're ready you're like it's okay let's do this let's tackle this last senior year let's get out of here. Stranger Things takes up a lot of time to film and it's preventing me from creating stories that I'm passionate about so I'm ready to say thank you and goodbye. But it wasn't all that bad. Millie said that starring as Eleven in Stranger Things has given her the tools and the resources to be a better actor. She said when it ends I'm going to still be able to see all these people. The actress made some similar comments back in August where she said that she was ready for Stranger Things to just end. She said that it has been a huge factor in part of her life but it would be kind of like graduating high school like senior year. You're ready to go and blossom and flourish and you're grateful for the time that you've had but it is time to create your own message and live your own life. One of her biggest non Stranger Things projects on the horizon is called The Electric State which is a post apocalyptic movie from the Russo brothers starring Chris Pratt and this is clearly something she's very excited about. She said to be able to go toe to toe with Chris Pratt it's a very exciting opportunity that I never thought I'd be able to have to be able to be treated the same as him and to be looked at and respected the same as him on the set by the production by the studio. Later on in the interview Millie recalled the backlash that she faced as a 13 year old girl during the Stranger Things press tours. If you don't know she was often criticized for talking over her co-stars in interviews and people said she was trying to steal their thunder. As a result she was subjected to a barrage of hate comments. She had grown adults calling her an idiot stupid and a brat. When thinking about this time she said we were kids and we talk over each other. I was just penalized for over talking and over sharing and being too loud. It's hard to hear that at 13. You're like I don't ever want to talk again. I don't ever want to be the loud person. In interviews after that she said that she couldn't help but think of all these comments. So she just remembered to stay silent and speak when she was spoken to even though she was dying to join in. She just felt like it wasn't her turn. Looking back this experience with backlash as a child actor led her to want to protect other underage actors in the future. She said our brains physically have not grown yet. To diminish and practically stunt someone's growth mentally, strip them down, tell them hey listen you don't look that great why are you wearing that? How dare you think you can wear that? How dare you say that? So clearly she's dealt with a lot of this hate growing up in the industry. Liz treatment on the internet even prompted several people to question why she was bullied so intensely from such a young age. In fact someone even predicted once that she would receive a public apology in the future for all the hate that she's gotten. Over the years the Stranger Things star has been the target of online bullying and the subject of multiple hateful reddit threads. Most of which began bashing her for apparently being annoying and over the top claiming that she exhibits bratty diva like behavior. One of the most prevalent rumors that has led to widespread mockery of Millie online is a bizarre yet enduring meme that she is somehow against the LGBTQ plus community. So in 2017 she was horrified when thousands of Twitter users started attributing fake racist and anti-gay comments to her all in an attempt to try to be funny. The hashtag take down Millie Bobby Brown started trending and everyone started piling in fake stories left and right. As a result she was forced to deactivate her Twitter account altogether and she didn't return to the platform for a very long time. So it's no wonder that she has horrible memories from that time in her life and now she wants to stop all that from happening to someone else. Last but not least a new AI law has just been revealed. A bipartisan bill that just got introduced seeks to create a federal law to protect actors and musicians from unauthorized digital replicas of their faces or voices. It's called the No Fakes Act and the idea is to standardize rules around using a person's face, name or voice. It prevents the production of a digital replica without the consent of applicable individual or rights holder unless it's part of a news, public affairs, sports broadcast, documentary or biographical work. The rights would apply throughout a person's lifetime and for their estate 70 years after their death. The bill includes an exception for using digital duplicates for parodies, satire and criticism. It also excludes commercial activities like ads as long as it's for news, a documentary or a parody. Individuals as well as entities like a deceased person's estate or a record label can file for civil action based on the proposed rules. The bill also states that a disclaimer stating the digital replica was unauthorized won't be considered an effective defense. The No Fakes Act essentially federalizes likeness laws but it varies from state to state. In fact some states don't have ground rules around the right to publicity at all. New York is one of the few states that explicitly mentions digital replicas and prohibits the use of a deceased person's AI replica. As we know these new AI tools that mimic voices or create photos with famous people has brought more attention to likeness laws. Earlier this year a song featuring Drake and The Weeknd went viral on TikTok and then on YouTube but it turned out that the song used AI versions of both artists without their permission. So with things like this happening it's no wonder musicians are concerned that their voices could be used to release 
release songs without their consent. And honestly, it is really, really hard to tell the difference when you're actually listening to the song. AI also became a hot button issue with the writer's strike because it revealed that Hollywood studios are trying to use digital scans of actors, which would obviously save them a ton of money in the long run. After all, if they didn't have to sign away million dollar checks anymore, that would be a dream come true for them. The Recording Industry Association of America said it welcomes this new bill. They released a statement saying, our industry has long embraced technology and innovation, including AI, but many of the recent generative AI models infringe on rights, essentially instruments of theft rather than constructive tools aiding human creativity. Another group, the Human Artistry Campaign, said in a statement that while it believes that AI can provide tools that unlock human creativity, it believes it can steal copyrighted material and use names and likenesses of artists without permission, which it dubs incredibly harmful to society. So it sounds like the bill could be a huge safety net when it comes to protecting human creativity and job security. Let's just hope that it's actually effective. What do you think about this news story? Please be sure to like and subscribe if you love it and you want to see more videos just like it. 